Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific Admiral's Edition, our Let's Play series against XTRG, with us playing as the Allies. XTRG as the Japanese has been launching an offensive in the Southern Pacific, and in the last turn we began a counteroffensive against the Japanese in the Central Pacific, launching a air raid against Tarawa. This turn we plan to continue those raids against uh, the Japanese. Meanwhile, this turn starting off with some anti-submarine warfare uh, actions off the coast of Australia. You can see here we're depth charging a Japanese submarine here off the coast of Newcastle. Doesn't look like we did a whole lot there, no damage inflicted. Meanwhile, uh, one of our sub torpe or submarines, torpedoes, whatever, is uh, shooting at some Japanese destroyers off the coast of northern Borneo and uh, is receiving depth charging of its own, apparently one direct hit against the Picarel, uh, and uh, two hits actually, by the looks of it. We'll have to check and see what her damage looks like. Uh, meanwhile, our ships off the coast of Tarawa are staying in place to launch a second uh, series of raids against Tarawa, and we'll see what happens there. Uh, some Dutch submarines of ours are firing some torpedoes against some uh, Japanese shipping here in the Strait of Mascar. Uh, where the Japanese have deployed a light carrier, which we have our own light carrier moving in uh, against the, uh, the Japanese there. And we may see our first carrier action in the next couple of days as we move the Hermes in to uh, get a little bit closer. And then we're probably going to bring uh, some additional forces into, into uh, is it Balkapin or uh, Balakpapan? Uh, to uh, provide some top cover for the for the Hermes as she approaches here. Um, we haven't seen a lot of Japanese fighters in that task force, mainly been bombers here that have been hitting uh, Balak Papen, uh, but we, uh, you know, we haven't really seen what their cap looks like. Um, it looks like it does it for sort of the initial submarine phase. And uh, we're moving now into the air phase here on uh, January 5th of 1942, which is the turn that we're currently in. Let's go ahead and fast forward here through some of the recon. It looks like there's a bunch of Japanese ships to the north of our uh, carrier task force, which is, um, you know, in the Tarawa region. I'm not too worried. I know his carriers are at least a couple of days away uh, based on our last recon spotting. Uh, meanwhile, the Japanese are bombing... Uh, Balak Papan. Maybe I'm getting this confused. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we saw Japanese. We did see them bomb something. Oh, yeah, they bombed the, the cargo ships. I was trying to remember, like, what did we see from their air wing? Uh, there's not a ton of Japanese fighters here. I didn't have a chance to bring down my 26 uh, Buffaloes and H-81s yet, so this was a small Dutch squadron of three Buffaloes that was kind of overwhelmed there by 13 zeros and 24 Kates. You can see here they're bombing our shipping at Balak Papan, uh, and they sank multiple ships here. Uh, fortunately, we don't really have anything super valuable here. The uh, AVD is probably the most valuable ship we have there, but they did sink uh, a couple of uh, light cargo ships. They sank an uh, AG, a PC, um, heavy damage to some other shipping in the port as well. Meanwhile, some Japanese bombers uh, attempting to hit Clark Field. Looks like they've got 22 Ki-48 Lily bombers here going up against eight of our uh, P-35s, uh, which are trying to intercept and get in amongst them. You can see the Japanese uh, bombed from 20,000 feet, and it doesn't look like they did any damage to the troops there. Uh, not a very accurate bombing raid at high altitude. Meanwhile, our second raid here on Tarawa with some uh, 80 aircraft, roughly, is going in. 80 bombers, that is. We've got 25 uh, escorts here. So you can see some initial bombs are hitting the target. So we'll go ahead and fast forward here and take a look at the results. We can see here we had two SBD-3 Dauntlesses damaged. Uh, we bombed and sank the Yokohama Maru. Uh, and then we put additional bombs into the Themel Maru and the Montevideo Maru. Uh, and we also put another bomb into the light cargo ship, the Katasugurin Maru, and she sank as well. So two more cargo ships sunk, two more damaged. Didn't see any destroyers or light cruisers, so I'm wondering if we sank those last turn. We did damage at least a light cruiser and two destroyers last turn. No spotting on that raid. Okay. Mean Whoa! The Hermes has 12 swordfish inbound on something. 
Uh, looks like... Why are you bombing destroyers? Two swordfish went after a destroyer. There appears to be a Japanese heavy cruiser, the Mogami, uh, which our, just our uh, torpedo planes are going in against. No! A hit but no explosion? And why did four of you attack a destroyer? You fucking idiots! Ah, damn it. So we lost one uh, swordfish destroyed, two damaged out of 12 attacking. They all attacked with torpedoes, which is the full torpedo complement of uh, the Hermes. And they did no damage. We had one that hit a Japanese heavy cruiser with a torpedo, but the torpedo failed to detonate. Now, these aren't Mark 14s. They're not Mark 13s. These aren't garbage torpedoes. They're British Mark 12s. And they still had a dud. Ugh. <sighs> That was a nice little surprise on what looks like a Japanese cruiser task force here in the Mascar Strait. And we did nothing. Great. Just great. Uh, the uh, gunboat and some other ships here at uh, Balak Papin just sank. And we're moving on to the PM phase of air operations. Lovely. <sighs> okay. Maybe more raids against Tarawa. We'll see. It's Carrier Raid Central with his own raid on Balak Papin and our raid against Tarawa. Our shipping is largely unimportant. We get so many cargo ships that they could probably walk across the Pacific Ocean from San Francisco to Tokyo Bay. Um, okay, so 39 SBDs bombing Tarawa again. Another bomb into a Japanese light transport. Three more swordfish going up against uh, the British uh, or the Japanese heavy cruiser Mogami. That appeared to be dropping bombs. They were. They were dropping two 500 pounders each. All of them missed. And, uh, fuck. Man, I'm really disappointed in that whole the way that, that we surprised the Japanese cruiser task force. There were no uh, combat air patrol overhead. And yet we did Jack Diddley against him. Mm. Whoa. Fuck! An S-boat with reliable torpedoes is a good shot against another Japanese heavy cruiser here. Presumably this is the carrier force. Four torpedoes fired at the heavy cruiser Kumano. Nothing hits. God damn it, guys. Can one of you do your fucking jobs? Swordfish hit, but no explosion against a Japanese uh, patrol boat. No depth charging, at least. That's the silver lining. As they say in Milwaukee Brewers games, it's the West Bend silver lining. Not much of a silver lining, if you ask me. A pretty disappointing turn all around, with the exception of the continued bombing of Tarawa. Japanese are attacking at Wenkau. We'll fast forward here. It looks like they got one-to-one -one odds and reduced the fortifications to zero. Uh, if we scroll down here, we'll see they lost 883 men, 134 squads disabled. We lost 749 men, 50 squads disabled, or killed, 8 disabled. So 58 squads lost on our end, mostly permanent. They lost 136 squads. So even though they had the assault odds and even though they reduced the forts, it'll be interesting to see if they try and attack again next turn. Meanwhile, the Japanese are attacking at Taipang on the Malay Peninsula, the first real movement south in a while. They did take Georgetown a couple of turns ago. Um, but they did uh, take uh, Taiping, and our force there is, is driven back, which is to be understood. That force is really just a blocking force. So we inflicted 39 casualties, including a squad destroyed. That's better than I thought they would have done. We lost 7 destroyed ourselves, 10 disabled, 410 men, uh, and are driven back. They only attacked with a regiment and a, and a guards unit, though, too. That's kind of a surprise. Comac is expanding fortifications, which is great. We're going to need those fortifications if the Japanese do land there. And that's going to do it for this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and catch you guys on the flip side. And we'll see what we have to do. Probably pull the Hermes back. Uh, maybe one more raid on Tarawa. We'll have to see where we see the enemy shipping. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, everybody. We're back here. And we are looking at the South Pacific because I think a couple of interesting developments have occurred. First, we do still see Japanese shipping in and around uh, Luganville, which is on the island of Espiritu Santo, which we know the Japanese recently took. Second, 
We see the Japanese Kirubutai here with over 300 aircraft moving to the northwest, so up sort of in this general direction. Um, they didn't bomb anything on New Caledonia this turn, uh, so perhaps they decided it wasn't worth their while. And then next, we see some task force, only one ship, but some task force moving to the southwest. Now, this could just be another submarine, right? It could just be Japanese submarines misidentified as a, uh, as a uh, uh, ship. But it also could be a fast transport uh, task force. We've seen uh, XTRG use... Uh, fast transports or small transport convoys in multiple occurrences uh, when he landed on Funafuti, uh, when he landed at Tulagi, when he landed on Shortlands, uh, when he landed on Canton Island and Baker Island. He used these small little tra task forces to bring troops in. And he I'm kind of thinking maybe he's making a play for Belup Island. Uh, it's a nice little base that could be built out to a level 3 airfield. It avoids the risk of landing on New Caledonia, which I have to imagine by this point he probably knows we have troops there. Um, and uh, it just seems like the logical place. Alternatively, he could be making a play for Comac, which I kind of hope he is because if he is... He's in for a little bit of a rude awakening. I mean, he'd need a reasonably sized task force, I think, to take this base. We currently have an Indian brigade here of 67 infantry squads. Uh, that's a reasonable amount of soldiers. That's about 1,000 combat infantrymen. Not a lot of support troops, uh, but nonetheless, it's on the northern coast of New Caledonia. It just built its fortifications up to level 1. So if he does land here, he'd probably need a little bit more than what he has, has to bear. Uh, additionally, maybe he's moving the carriers over to bomb Comac. That's certainly a possibility. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to move. We've got a cruiser force here at uh, Australia with uh, three heavy cruisers, three destroyers, and a light cruiser. Then we're going to move northeast uh, to Comac. I'm not really going to move them to Comac. I'm mainly, I'm going to move them uh, in the general vicinity of New Caledonia, but a little bit further west so that they're out of range of enemy um you know, enemy bombers, but they're only moving on mission speed, so they're going to move this direction, and then they're going to kind of probably pause after a day or so right around here until we have a better sense of what's going on here. If he makes a play for Comac, then, um, you know, depending on the size of the force, maybe we'll sprint our cruisers in and try and engage. If he doesn't make a play for Comac, uh, then we'll probably just return to Australia. But I want to at least have some troops nearby in the event that he does decide to make some kind of, uh, you know, stab at... Uh, at, at, you know, our shipping in the area or, or our bases in the area. So we'll do that. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a stronger force that I can bring to bear. I am leaving a couple of ships here in Sydney. Uh, the Minneapolis has quite a bit of systems damage and probably needs to rest and repair. Uh, and the same for the destroyer helm. Uh, so we're going to leave one destroyer, one heavy cruiser back, and we'll move the three heavy cruisers forward. Uh, meanwhile, we do have uh, some shipping is arriving at Auckland, so we're going to go ahead and disband some of that. These guys haven't arrived yet. Oh my god, they're out of fuel and their system damage is out of control. Um, so yeah, so we're moving those cruisers to the northeast. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have had our first uh, transport unit with some fighters arrive at Pago Pago. So we've got 18 P-40B Warhawks that have just arrived. They're being unloaded, uncrated uh, on the island. We've had uh, a couple of other support forces, base forces arrive on Pago. We've also got the 8th Marines and 34th Infantry Regiment in the process of unloading. The majority of those troops of the 8th Marines have already unloaded. Uh, we're starting to bring some fuel to bay as well on the island here. 36,000 fuels being offloaded by these tankers. Um, we have unloaded almost the entire 8th Marines. Looks like there's 800 men still on board these ships uh, with various heavy support equipment, but nonetheless, the unloading is occurring. Um, if we swing to the north, our carrier raid on Tarawa has been going on probably too long. So it's been going on for two days now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull these carriers northeast uh, back toward back toward Johnston Island. And I apologize, guys, if I'm yawning. I'm recording some of this at like 3 in the morning, so uh, do bear with me if you can. But we're going to go ahead and pull these carriers back toward Johnston Island. And we're going to have our, um, our tankers uh, attempt to meet up with them. So let's see where... 
Where should they meet exactly? Let's meet here. So that's one, two, three, four, five hexes. Hopefully that's where they're going to meet up roughly. I uh, did some math, and I think that's roughly where they meet up. If not, then they'll meet up the following turn. Um, meanwhile, we are also going to send the USS Yorktown, which just arrived at Pearl Harbor, out on a raid of Midway Island. So as those carriers are moving east and returning to port, and he's potentially reacting against them, we're going to send another carrier raid with USS Yorktown. I'm not going to set that in full speed. We're going to send another carrier raid with USS Yorktown, out in the direction of Midway Island. In addition to that carrier raid, we're also going to send a bombardment task force out that way too. So we've got two battleships, the Nevada and the Oklahoma. Both have repaired from their damage suffered at Pearl Harbor, and so we're going to have a little bit of retribution here with a heavy bombardment of Midway Island and whatever Japanese troops are in the vicinity. Um, so we'll bombard Midway and we'll attack it with aircraft, uh, and that may provide a little bit of a diversion as these carriers move in from the east, uh, or for, sorry, west to east, uh, returning from their raid on Tarawa. So keeping him off his toes in the Central Pacific is the name of the game in this particular turn. Uh, meanwhile, if we move back west toward Borneo, uh, the Hermes has launched a carrier raid against uh, the island or the Japanese cruisers here off the coast of uh, Balakpapan. Uh, the carrier raid did nothing. Uh, its, uh, its torpedoes all missed. So we're going to return it to Surabaya, uh, mainly because the Hermes has used up all of her torpedoes. She only carries 12. And as you can see here, she has two swordfish squadrons here, totaling about 16 aircraft. So they used all 12 torpedoes, did absolutely jack shit. Uh, we should probably fire the squadron commander. But uh, you can see these guys... Uh, did commence a torpedo raid. They are now completely out of torpedoes. Uh, actually, it looks like a couple of the units gained some experience, so that's at least one positive. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, their raid failed to accomplish anything of any real uh, substance. Here you can see the missions that these guys flew. And um, we're going to pull them back to where they can rest and rearm at Sorobaya. Uh, in addition to that, we have some uh, supply convoys that are being set up for Singapore. We've got uh, the Munlock, a cargo ship here of 4,100 supply capacity, is reloading supplies at, Balak pa or at uh, Palembang. Um, she just finished a supply run to Singapore, so she'll uh, embark in another one, uh, hopefully another successful one. In addition to that, we also have this AD, so Detro Destroyer Tender the Blackhawk, which is going to be carrying in 2,400 supplies, also bring that into Singapore, so potentially we can bring the supply situation up to about 50,000 supply at Singapore. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, our troops are continuing to fall back from uh, Clark Field. We've got the 31st Infantry Division, the 11th Infantry, the 1st, uh, the 91st, 57, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we've got about 626 combat value currently at Clark Field, uh, but these guys are about halfway back to, uh, to Bataan, uh, where they've been ordered to retreat to. Uh, we're trying to get the defenses up to at least level 4 before the enemy shows up, and that should be accomplished, but about a third of our strength is at Clark Field as well, so we want to make sure those troops get pulled back in time uh, to uh, not get completely destroyed at Clark Field, because that would be a bit of a blow to us if they were to be seriously harmed there. Um, other than that, I don't have a lot else going on. There's you know some logistics, some convoys moving around. Uh, the uh, um, Repulse is still on her way back to Cape Town here. You can see uh, she's making good progress. I don't think I can flank speeder yet. doesn't look like it. Uh, but she's almost back to Cape Town. We'll probably be there in about two days, uh, I would guess, maybe three uh, and uh, begin to repair. I'm hoping she's only out of action for about a month. Same with the three destroyers that are with her. Uh, and then the Prince of Wales is in the process of pulling back. She's almost off the map. Uh, she's up to just the edge of the map. Uh, 54 float damage, so uh, a bit of float damage there. Um, we can't flank speed her or anything like that. She's still a ways away from Cape Town. She'll probably be out of action for about a year, but uh, that's where she's moving to. Uh, meanwhile, on the West Coast, I think, did our battleships finish up? We do have the War Spite. She doesn't have an upgrade coming yet, though, so she already has radar. The uh, other ship here, the Colorado, actually does have an upgrade, so we could immediately send her into the dry docks to get an upgrade. Uh, that upgrade for the Colorado will add air search and surface search radar, so it should make it much more effective 
in all phases of combat, but it will take about, what, 21 days? No, 18 days uh, in order to have the upgrade completed. Um, I don't really have a lot going for you guys this turn. This was turn. This turn was kind of a little bit of a slower one. If we, uh, you know, we continued the bombing raids on Tarawa, but uh, if we take a look here, last turn ships sunk. Uh, we had a few. So the Japanese uh, cargo ship, the Yokohama Maru, thirteen uh, value. The U.S. Navy uh, AVD Childs at Balak Papen. Uh, the patrol craft uh, Formal Hot. Uh, at Balak Papen, the uh, Auxiliary Gamma, uh, three light cargo ships, uh, a fourth light cargo ship, another gunboat. Uh, you know, essentially we lost several light cargo ships. The Japanese lost an AKL, uh, and that's about it, I guess. Interesting that we haven't had any reports of that uh, Japanese uh cruiser at Kwajalein. We bombed, uh, or sorry, Tarawa. We bombed Tarawa twice, and we haven't seen it. You know, the second raid. Um, we're not saying it sank, but I don't really know what to make of that. Um, I'm still curious about the Maya here. We're claiming that we sank it with a Mark 14 torpedo. We only put one into it, uh, but uh, it's still saying it sunk. Then again, the Congo is saying it sunk too, and we know we only hit her with like a 500-pound bomb, so we're pretty sure she didn't sink. Um, but I, I, I don't really know. Um, submarine losses. Japanese have lost a couple. We lost the Sarjo a turn or two ago. I don't really know. How is anybody else doing? Um, can we view... Naval units. No, those are aircraft. List active ships. Let's see. The Pike is where? Headed back to base. The Sea Dragon also headed back to base. The Sea Lion is currently at. Sorbaya. The S-36 is also headed back to base. The Perch is headed back to base, I think. No, she's not. So let's send her back to Singapore to get repaired. She's got 20 float damage, so that's more than we want her to be taken. Um, if we go back to active ships here. Um, was that the Pickerel or the Perch? No, that was the Pickerel, I guess. Uh, the Totog is at Pearl Harbor, already being repaired, and I think that about does it here for our subs. So, subs, that's where they're at. Uh, meanwhile, any other shipping around here that needs to be attended to? Let's disband those guys there. Tankers. Uh, do we have fuel here for these guys? Not much. I guess we can load oil. We'll go ahead and load oil on the British Sailor Transport. And then once it's loaded up, it's going to go to Perth with 8,000 oil. Oil is still useful. Um, whoa. Why are you traveling that way? That doesn't make sense. That is not a logical course. That must be some kind of weird typo there. It's definitely not going that way. Um, these tankers here... Going to Carnes. They're loading fuel. So we've got some tankers loading fuel, some loading oil here. Um, the real oil uh, gold mine would be Palembang, which is almost 200,000 oil. Um, we've got some transports here at Oosthaven that are loading up. These guys are headed to Oosthaven. Okay. Oosthaven's going to have a lot of shipping there soon. Surprised there's no oil in Oosthaven. Meanwhile, fuel... 122.71, okay. Um, but nonetheless, so we're going to start pulling some oil out of Java because that's kind of one of the things that we have there. And Australia does have uh, heavy industry, so oil can be useful there. We don't have a ton of oil on Java, but it is an option. I would send some transports to Balak Papen, but with the Japanese cruisers and, and uh, aircraft in the area, that means this port's kind of closed down to us for the moment. Um, 
will leave the aircraft here in the north, mainly because their uh, their fatigue situation isn't great. This Buffalo squadron has fatigue of 11, which isn't terrible, but if we transfer it, it's going to take another 15 or so. Uh, the H-81As have 15 uh, fatigue, so that would be even worse. So we're going to hold them in place where they're at. Um, we did have intelligence telling us that the Japanese are about to land on Davo, uh, a Davo. Uh, so if we actually go to SIGINT here, we can see SIGINT for January 5th. Uh, shows us that there is a planned landing somewhere on here. I saw it in the ops report. Yeah. So the three Kerr 2nd NS SNLF force is loaded on transports moving to Davo. So we know that they're about to land on Davo, but we don't have any troops there. All of our troops in the southern island of Mindanao have concentrated at Kaigan, uh, and they are currently waiting there for the eventual Japanese assault. They've got over 4,400 soldiers. They've got a good deal of soldiers there. They don't have very much supply, only about 3,600 they don't have a super strong fortification either. What are they at? Level 2 forts, I think? Yeah, level 2, and they're working on level 3. I had more cargo on the way there, but it kind of these Japanese raids here in the Celeb Sea and the Mascar Strait interrupted my plans for that. So we're just going to kind of have to live with that as is. In China, I don't have a lot of developments. We've consolidated the Flying Tigers at Changsha. Uh, the Japanese have assaulted us at Wangchao. We've held out, although we've lost some casualties there. We've lost the city of Changchao, uh, and we've pulled soldiers back to Luoyang. We haven't really seen the Japanese really do much in China beyond that. Uh, the city of Taipang did fall to the Japanese, uh, and our troops there, the 3rd SSV Infantry Battalion, have fallen back to the next adjacent hex. Again, to act more as a delaying force, as a blocking force. Um, the troops at Singapore are... Uh, continuing to dig in and sort of rest and, and recuperate and make sure that they're ready for the upcoming battle there. They're up to level three fortifications. Um, the soldiers at Bataan, meanwhile, are enjoying their increased rations with all those masses of supplies that we brought in. Still a little bit over the uh, supply penalty point, but not by much. Um, and we're working on those level four forts. Um, in terms of aircraft losses last turn... I don't think there's a lot. He lost a couple of Dinas. We lost a couple of Dauntlesses and Buffaloes and Swordfish. Pretty quiet turn all around. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's the situation. We're pulling our carriers out of Taro. We're sending another carrier to Midway. We're pulling some cruisers out of Australia, sending them off the coast of New Caledonia to see what develops. Um, we're pulling some oil and fuel out of Java itself. We're pulling the Hermes back to Surabaya. Uh, in order to uh, replenish our stores and supplies. Um, and that's kind of the situation right now. So um, we'll see how things develop next turn. But until next turn, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you guys for tuning in to yet another episode of our War in the Pacific Admirals Edition series. And until next time, I'm out.